Welcome to Electron Line. The first step in the Kalman filter process is calculating the predicted state. So we had the initial state. Now we need to predict the future state. So that's going to be the state as predicted. That's what the P here stands for. And that's going to be based on the previous state, K minus 1. So predicting the current state, K. We multiply the previous state, which were determined by the initial conditions that we chose, the initial position and the initial velocity. And we have to multiply that times the A matrix. Now the A matrix is a matrix that allows us to update the position and the velocity based upon the amount of time that has elapsed, the delta T. In this case, our delta T is going to be one second. And then we add to that the changes to the position and the velocity as based upon the acceleration. Notice that our initial acceleration is going to start at two meters per second squared. And then we have to have a B matrix here, which allows us to translate the acceleration into an adjustment to the position and the velocity and that's done according to the B matrix here. That would be the B matrix for a two-dimensional Kalman filter. Remember we're going to let the error in this process be zero for now to make it simpler. Later on we'll do an example where we don't have that zero. Now let's go ahead and use the numbers that we have here to calculate the new predicted state. Since delta t is equal to 1, this becomes a matrix that looks like this. We're going to multiply that times the initial position and the initial velocity. Initial position and velocity right there. 4,000 for the position and 280 for the velocity. Plus the B matrix, 1 half delta t squared. Delta t is 1. That means that becomes 1 half. And here delta t is 1. Multiply that times acceleration matrix 2. Now let's go ahead and multiply this out and see what we get. Here we have a 2 by 1 matrix, that's 4,000 plus 280, that gives us 4,280 for the new position. That's a new predicted position, makes sense. If, you, if the plane is at 4,000 meters, it's moving at 280 meters per second, then that would be the new predicted position. Of course, depending upon all the errors that are involved and the new measurements we're making, that will not be the ultimate position we think the plane is at when we get through the common filter process. Then multiply this times that, and of course, Velocity is going to be 280 meters per second. However, that will still be adjusted by the acceleration that we're experiencing. So plus, that will be 1 half times 2, which is 1, and 1 times 2, which is 2. So these will be the adjustments in the position and the velocity based upon the acceleration and the time that's elapsed so far. So when we add those together, we have a new position or new predicted position of 4,281 meters and 282 meters per second for the velocity. So this becomes the new or the current predicted state based upon the first part of the process of the Kalman filter. So stay tuned for the next step. There's seven more steps to go through and then we'll go all the way around you'll see how we apply the Kalman filter to this process.